This is the Healy Brothers Show. All right, so we got the, the auto show is coming up. It's less than, what is it, the 14th? I'm spilling on myself. So 13 days away. It's the 27th and 28th are, are the media days, so it's literally right around the corner. So we'll, we'll talk about some of the past auto show experiences for us, but the biggest thing is I want to ask you, because you send us through this. Like Steve and I have gone two years in a row now. I think Justin and Drew used to go to the media days. Yeah, we used to have the whole crew going. Because it's really special that we can go to the press days. Like not a not a lot of people have access to that type of day at the auto show because that's when they have like their press conferences, they're releasing new vehicles. You're, it's exciting. There's like no one there. So we get to actually touch the cars. Like, you know, the public days are all like locked for the most part. Yeah. You can't go inside the red rope and all that. Yeah. Stuff. So you get so much more access at these media days compared to any type of public day. So it's a really special thing for us. It's like probably get more access than the dealers. Probably. <laughs> Cause by the time you guys go, no, you guys go the end of the first day, right? Yeah. Yeah. The second, so it's a couple different days, depending on what the second day, like late in the day, the second day is when they start locking and putting ropes up to get prepared for the next morning. So I think you guys still get access, but so what's the purpose for you sending us to events like the auto show? So f first off, it's all the new product. Um, and it's, it's something that's, it's also so enjoyable. The first thing is, is you guys have a great time, but it's really to see the new product. It's to get a first look at, of creating content for something that, you heard about coming out was going to be there, but now you get to touch, feel it, talk about it, put your opinion on it, and show our local consumers that that might not they don't go to the auto show or they don't check online, but now that they engage with us locally, they get to see all this amazing content, the new stuff coming out. What what are these new features are about? Because because you also have reps there and they're professionals telling you about the car, which is which is awesome. Their press conferences yeah. give a lot. So of so they're talking about all this all this stuff about the car that you probably didn't even know was going to happen. All these new upgrades, the new the new lines on these cars, the new front ends, the new back ends, the new motors. How much more efficient these vehicles are. So you're hearing so much stuff, and New York Auto Show is the biggest one. So you get all this stuff firsthand before anyone else sees it. Yeah, you have the the leaks and the and the first. Um, and people are reporting about what's coming, but it's not like this. It's a whole different atmosphere. You get to be in person, you see it, and it's it's amazing to do it in New York City. Like it's the greatest city in the world for a reason. So it's it's definitely a lot of fun, and and we love how you guys enjoy it. You guys go there and you you work your asses off. You go. Yeah. It's a it's long not, two days, but it is yeah. super super. Yeah, enjoyable. you stay over there. You get all these vehicles, and you're and you're giving it to us live too for a lot of it. So the that consumers was, are able to engage live, which is really the cool. The big thing last year talking about live, like. During the uh, the first day, the first thing you do when you get there, you get there super early. I forget what time it starts, but that's the World Car Awards uh, breakfast and ceremony. So they do that right away, and that's almost bigger than their press conferences when they release stuff because that's when the companies get to see like that their hard work actually paid off because World Car Awards are like the biggest awards for automakers. Can't get much bigger. No, they are the biggest awards. And so you start off the breakfast and – I don't know, you get to eat for like five, 10 minutes before they get on the stage and start talking. So like you're like shoving down bacon and eggs, like trying to get your ass up to the front. And that day, like last year, instead of just recording it, I started putting it on our story live. So now we were putting on our story as it was happening. So as the Ionic 6 was getting all these awards, we were putting on our story as it was happening. I think the EV6 GT and the World Car Awards actually reposted our story. So not only is it great for our consumers, they get to see it like right then and there, but we were the first people to get it out there and the World Car Awards reposted our story because we tagged them and everything to try and get as big of an opportunity. Yeah, we're trying to get engagement as well. As a, out of that content we can, but it's like that live portion of it is like, all right, well, the World Car Awards recognized that we were getting it up there like right away and they reposted that for us because to be honest, during the whole ceremony, there was only like four people standing up at the stage recording for the whole ceremony. Then it got a little later in the ceremony, more I think people started like going up to the front, but so there was only like four people. And I think I was the only person that took out my cell phone and I put it on our story and the service sucks. So it took a little while yeah. for, it to, for it to upload, but it was worth it. So our consumers got to see it and the world car awards recognize. Yeah. We got themselves. to see it too. So you, you beat yeah. me there last year too. So <laughs> Cause uh, you got the dealers that first night, right? Yeah, so we do have we have separate nights depending on what OEM, but a dealers. So Chevy might do a meeting there where it's closed and like the dealers can go in there and view it. It's cool, but so it's the for each specific brand. Yeah, it depends on the brand. Like right. Hyundai might do a like uh, the New York dealers come at say after everything's closed, do a little hors d'oeuvres. You hang out, you get to you get to see the vehicles. The CEO will talk usually. 
Um, it's a little different feel, but the media day, you guys are actually in there before us. Like we can go as dealers if we want, but yeah. the media day, it's a, it's a madhouse of, of creating content and showing the world these new products and all these features and also hearing these people talk about them. So, yeah, cause last year, and we've been doing it for a long time. Like we've had Andrew and Justin were doing it and they've been working for us for children probably. Yeah. I don't when know I if you're a child, not children. Yeah. I was a child probably. So we've been doing it for a, a long time. It's been great. And now with technology and how we can engage with our local consumer and they can get a firsthand feel of what's going on in New York city, what's going on in the auto industry, what's news coming out, what they, they can purchase shortly. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I know you guys enjoy it. I know it's a lot of work too, but uh, we it's try to make it, it easy though. for you guys. But yeah. I agree. Last year there was, was it three big press conferences, kind of like three and a half. So the Ram, they call it the Rev. I don't know where the, I don't know if it's Ram electric vehicle. Yeah. I'm assuming that's what Rev stands for, but they released that last year. That was the first look at it was at the auto show. That was their press conference for Stellantis. It was about the, the Ram Rev. Kia's press conference was the official release of the EV9, and Hyundai's press conference was the official release of the new Kona. So the regular Kona, the Kona N-Line, and the um, electric was their release last year. So, and that's where it comes down where you're saying like auto show being like the biggest one. Granted, some automakers release some stuff at the LA and the Chicago auto show, yep, but not truck. usually. They come first, but they don't usually release anything at those those auto shows. So like that was huge last year, actually being able to be there for the official release of vehicles. And the Rev was super surprising because originally they had that teaser out that looked like some super futuristic truck. A lot of people hated it. Some people liked it. It was like cyber truck type of vibes is what it really gave off. And then when it finally released, it was like as if it was like a Ford Lightning where they basically just took a Ram and just made it electric. So people loved it because... It, it, it wasn't like you still have that truck feel like yeah hey i can like, go do some work it with wasn't it, like yeah. different to them like they felt like it was like normalized to them meanwhile like when that leak came out of that crazy futuristic design not a lot of people liked it because it wasn't what they were used to and it didn't feel like their ram pickup truck to them so when that rev actually came out on at the auto show it was like oh okay i like this i'm used to this this looks like a ram truck and that was a that was a big thing that was awesome and then chrysler's press conference was about um an autism package. Maybe they didn't use the word autism. I don't remember. Maybe it was like a sensory friendly package that can come on the Pacifica because they understand their market. Yep. And we also did that. That uh, we did the that giveaway. That's where giveaway we got too. the giveaway from because when we were there, that was Chrysler's. That press was a great conference. giveaway. And we basically took that package because it wasn't available to the public yet. I don't even know if it is yet. I don't pay attention to Pacificas <laughs> and whatnot. But we basically took what that package was that they released at the auto show and we made our own to do that to do that giveaway that's how we we yeah, handled it was it. fun what we did it, blankets the soft pillows it, all, all like emotional yeah. support to to keep that them was at ease, that's right? all that the chrysler package came with so we pretty much just literally copied and pasted that for our giveaway so we yeah. got back from and the auto right show. there that's that's just a true statement of how an oem and dealership relationship yeah. should go so it was like we learned that from the oem we came back from the auto show and we we're like this isn't available yet, but we know there's families in need in our community because I have close family friends that they have um, a son with, I think he has Asperger's. So, you know, days can be, he has like good and bad days depending on how he, he wakes up. And there's certain things that come for him and certain things that really like set him off to have a rough day, like from the get go. So like it can be challenging, not even for like the, the parents, but like for the kid, it's really challenging. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's challenging it's not, it's for the parents because they got to find the ways of what actually comforts my child. So um, I know what it's like to see families. I'd like if you want to say like they, they have to battle that on a day day to day basis. So it was pretty cool. I wish I could remember the exact conversation I had with the woman, but it was similar to that type of thing. Yeah, so I remember it, meant, it was uh, people had a lot of great stuff to say. I mean, that was a great idea a lot to bring to, it yeah, back. That was, that I mean, it means really a lot cool to us. One. I mean, you're helping like local people and changing their day and just making their day, their week can make their year better. Um, just a s simple, yeah. just just being being happy and, and giving back and it's huge. Yeah. And then back to like the content size of it, like all of those content videos did great. Every single oh, phenomenal. We're first to it. So the, the best one was about the, the Charger EV. What was it Charger Daytona SRT? I can't remember the exact name of it. I really don't. But um, it did great for some of the wrong reasonings, though, because they're trying to make a muscle electric car. So a lot of people just think that's kind of stupid. It's a little confusing yeah. to me, too. But well, for people, if you don't know, it has an exhaust system. 
So it's the same decibel as the current SRT charger. And it has actual exhaust, like piping or tubing, whatever you want to consider. It does yeah. have a legitimate exhaust, but instead of being connected to your ICE engine, it's connected to speakers. And those speakers produce the same decibel sound as your current SRT charger. Yeah, there's a few vehicles that you could do that so now and put the I, sound on. I do know. Well, the other ones, it's all on the inside of the yeah. car. So, like, they have the inside test track, which they've had those two years in a row, the EV test track, because obviously there's no emissions. You can drive them inside. And when we were in, I don't remember if it was the EV6 or one of the other guys, the guy's putting on, like, a fart noise on the inside because yeah. that's, like, available. Those are on the inside speakers. The charger's on the outside. You see the exhaust in the back. It says Fratzonic exhaust chamber. You should probably look up what that word came from, Fratzonic, yeah. F-R-T-Z-O-N-I-C or something like that. But so it's on the outside, so it actually has an, an exhaust note. Um, they didn't have it at the New York Auto Show. They didn't do any press conference on it. They didn't show us what the exhaust sounded like. I'm curious if they will this year because I know throughout last year they were tweaking the noise. I don't know if they were tweaking it due to the public's reaction to it or if they just weren't happy with the exhaust note because they only showed it off once at I don't even know if it was an actual auto show or if it was one of their like conferences themselves. So I'm curious if that'll be something that they show this year since they tweaked it throughout the last calendar year. So that one did the did the greatest, but then we got to see vehicles like the Z06 before we got them. The that, that, e was my, that was my uh, the was Equinox my EV was there. was there, the Blazer EV, the Silverado EV, like all those cars that we don't have yet. Granted, we did get Blazers in now, but yep. they were all there. Well, Blazers had the stop sale. Now we're we're a lot officially allowed to resell them I again. So I forgot that they did they, have the uh, stop sale. They um they fixed that issue, and so. Yeah. E the so, Blazer EV is available, which is, it's a sexy looking car too. It's, it's really nice. It's really nice. Um, and, um, so it was just really cool to see all those cars and our, our consumers show that they, they enjoyed to see them. And it's better videos for us to offer them than if we were to go to the public days. Cause when you go to the public days, like there's not even like, well, it's also room. a mad, it's also a mad there's house. It's not really walking room. So we're actually able to really show them the vehicle that even if they give were give your opinion the talk about it and learn about it so. they're not even going to be able to see it like that so it really benefits our consumer and so the content opportunity is just huge like just unbelievable and even for us it's an informational based thing right yep like we know the information now about the stuff that's coming out so like this year the second day after whatever press conferences happen the first day in the world car awards we're going to add something new like last year we added where we did a blog because, you know, each year it's like a it's like a learning curve for Steve and I. Like, there's something we want to do different next year. And then after we do that something different, there's something we want to do the following year. So, like, this year we're going to actually shoot a podcast episode during that second day. Because I have some tables sporadically around it. So, this has just come back where it's like two hard days of work. The, the main reason why for staying down there is instead of having to come back and drive or take the train and waste time, we just go from the auto show to our hotel room and just get right to looking at whatever we shot and getting stuff out to, to our social pages. We're going to shoot a podcast episode, but I need to get back to the hotel and rewatch all those videos and write down my own notes to, to make sure I'm remembering exactly what happened in that first day to talk about. So that's a new thing that we're going to do this year that we haven't done any other year. So every you're going like to zoom, zoom me in there? If I have service at... <laughs> at, at the Javits Center, we didn't really have service last year, so if we have service. Yeah, we, we can it's definitely within difficult. that. So it, the World Car Awards, like I said, like they're they're the biggest opportunity, and the last two years for our brands have been massive. lights out, lights out. Hyundai and Kia, because they're like partner companies, they like own everything now. It's like yep. the Hyundai and Kia Awards, basically. So I couldn't remember all of them, but I have them written down here. So like in so in 2022. The Ionic 5 took home three awards on its own. World Car of the Year, most prestigious award you can get. World Electric Vehicle of the Year, and the World Car Design of the Year. They cleaned up. So they took all all those cars. There, There's other awards. World Urban Car of the Year, Performance Car of the Year. There's other ones. Um, I think that's all yeah. of them. No, these these the are the big ones. These are the, the main ones here. And then the Ionic 6 did the exact same thing the following year. Same three awards. World Car of the Year, World Electrical Vehicle of the Year, and World Car Design of the Year. But last year, we did also have another car, which was the EV6 GT, took home World Performance Car of the Year. And then the EV9 took home an award, too, right, for electric vehicle? No, the EV9 is up for them this year. Oh, up for this year. So the their 
a couple months back, they released the top five or maybe top 10 for each category. And then it was just within this past month because it's coming up because it's a voting system. There's people that are within, I don't know if it's like a board of whatever you want to consider them that they vote on all of this. So the EV9's in the top three for the World Car of the Year and in the top three for the World Electric Vehicle of the Year. And the Ionic 5N, which is something we haven't got yet, is up for World Performance Car of the Year. And God, do we get a lot of message about that. Everyone that wants it. Freaking cool car. Quick, and uh, quick I know car. now since it's up for an award, it is actually going to be there in person. So that's a cool thing because it wasn't there. We were last thinking year. about making it a, a, the Team Healy car. What do you think about that? That <laughs> would kidding. be pretty crazy. I'm you kidding. might get some speeding tickets I'm sent, sent to the BDC. <laughs> so let me just tell you a little story about like a little background of why this is so important for Hyundai and Kia. So Hyundai and Kia, when we first got the brand, well, Hyundai, these are known as bargain brands, like affordable brands entry market brands and they didn't have i would say a, a great re, great reviews on them they reputation, weren't they were yeah. reputation all that stuff and now these brands have came like crazy just rush of, of phenomenal awards and all this stuff and they've worked so hard the koreans to get this done and get it to america because they know this is this is like the place they, they yeah. need to sell vehicles so now they're considered competing with toyota and hondas which they never thought in a million years. If you look back 15, 20 years ago, these vehicles were just like, eh. Now they're like, let's get up there and fight we with should, the big we guys. We should look up the numbers of sales so, over last year. So it's not just sales, like the reliability, the warranty yeah. that comes with these vehicles, the design, the sex appeal to them, uh, the affordability at the same time. Like you get in one of these, the tech is is phenomenal. At like a base level yeah. Hyundai or Kia, the tech is phenomenal. So it's just, it's just a... Uh, it's phenomenal to see as a dealer, and we thank those guys for for all the hours and technology they put in, and like design, reliability. It's just amazing to see, and now they're they're competing with some of the yeah. greatest brands ever, like Toyota and Honda. So, and they're not slowing down either. Like the Santa Fe no. just came out, and that's an unbelievable design. Yeah, I mean, right. people are calling YouTube, it like a Range Rover, like a Ford yeah, I was gonna say, a Land Rover, Rover I should say. They say it looks just like the Defender is what people yep. see in it, but it better entry price defender. <laughs> a little better <laughs> a lot better be a lot better price. a lot better a hundred thousand dollars i mean they have they have great colors for it too great yeah. design the dashboard's phenomenal um it's i mean it, it's they, if you drive a if way. you drive a land rover and you just wanted something affordable or something like that just check it out i, I highly recommend it um, our staff's talk about obsessed with those it. headlights and taillights every time I do a video on the car. Yeah, I mean, the it doesn't, yeah, yeah, it doesn't stand for Hyundai. It stands for Healy. So <laughs> that's they, funny. I the big, the big, a, the big H really is funny. for Healy. That's yeah. we had a partnership with Hyundai, so they said we'll make it for Healy. <laughs> that's really funny, but they they did a really uh, a really good job with that. And, oh, phenomenal! And it was it was really cool to see. Even the updates did. on the Tucson. Are, are great yeah they come out with updates like every the year. sportage is you know they change the front end car. on the elantra and the uh sonata a couple months back the sonata now has that uh what do they call it horizon front light bar or whatever yeah yeah I think that's what the call thing is horizon so they they did updates on though and yeah, the, i'd love to drive a, i love i drove a sonata for like two years as a commuter car back yeah. and forth i loved that i mean that was before the I outlander had, yeah, and now I'm driving the, the Mitsu Outlander right now as a cleaner. I had a Tucson, which I which I loved. Um, we never have enough Kias in stock for me to, for me to buy one. Never. So, see, but, our work car is the Ionic. From, I don't. I've only driven it probably three times. Steve yeah. and now Sean and I think Tim. That it's their car. I don't even drive. Yeah. It's not worth my time. Yeah. But that car was awesome, right? Like, uh, it, it comes from the factory with. I forget what they consider exactly because it's not like a self-driving feature. They have an exact wording for it, which is it has all autonomous driving within it. I forget what their exact wording is for it, but it is so convenient on the highway. I don't even know it had it, right? So, like, I at first I was like, why is this thing, like, fighting me when I turn on the cruise control? I'm like, why is it, like, fighting me to, like, stay in the lane? And then I forget I searched it up and I realized that when you turn on the cruise control, there's another like uh, emblem that pops up uh, and on your dashboard that turns on like that semi-autonomous driving on the highway. And I was like, oh, so I'm the one fighting the, the car. It's not, it's not fighting me. I'm fighting it. So it's really cool. It matches the speed. Like if you set it, uh, you know, 84 changes from 55 to 65. Yeah. You set it to 55 as soon as like the GPS picks up. Then it changed to 65. It changed on its own. So that car, that car is awesome to drive. I love that car. Sadly, I don't get to drive it enough. But yeah, I mean, I, a lot of praise for Hyundai and Kia at the auto show, which is which is great for us, great for as a dealer. Jose and he, Munoz. Yeah, I mean, he goes he so happy every year. Yeah. So our private meeting there was, um, we had 
all the big Hyundai, the big wigs there. And he's uh, so grateful to have us, but we're so grateful to have, have their team. They're pushing out great product and it's good for our consumer. At the end of the day, the consumer wins, which is the most important thing. It doesn't yeah. matter if we, we like it or, or he likes it. It's it's, or Hyundai likes it. It's matters about the consumer and, uh, and them loving the products, whether it is, but we were talking a lot about Hyundai and Kia. Some other, one of our other brands had a big breakthrough last year was the Ford Bronco, which was, which is now up for an award, which I am a little confused about. Uh, I don't know why they waited now. To I, I would imagine. Design I, well, maybe, maybe we'll get the Bronco Raptor R. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's why, because the no, Raptor but it's got it's, so. it's got to be for the Raptor. I mean, it's phenomenal. It's, it's a they, big meaty beast. Yeah, so, so it's up for World Car Design of the Year, which I'd be surprised if it doesn't win. Yeah, I mean, it's the the design of it is is pretty awesome. So it'll be really cool this year. If all four of these ve- or three vehicles take home these four awards, it'll be a big year for us and. Uh, all of our customers. So just just overall recap. I mean, that's it's got to be a fun day for you guys. I mean, oh, I know I know we have you guys all set up for it, we're doing it, but yeah. the way you've taken it upon yourself to be organized, scheduled, and all that stuff for the auto show, we're glad you guys enjoy, and we we love everything you do for there too. It's yeah, it's, well, it's a busy two that. days, but you guys crush it, and, and it's only gonna get better. So yeah, it's worth my it. my day is a little my days are a little different there. <laughs> Mine are later at night, meetings, What's dinners. Funny is when we're and, leaving the first day. <clears throat> we start seeing your nice setup of like you see like a bar getting set up and we're like man we got bacon and eggs and pretzels for lunch and these yeah. dealers are getting set up with like all these fancy stuff i'm like man it's funny yeah but, well um, the, the meetings the meet so the meetings are they're talking about it's so for the, the dealer side they're talking about inventory when you're going to see these the new technologies they, they're releasing their products when you're going to see those uh they go over some they'll even talk about hey this is going to be stalled a little bit but we're we're getting well, there. That's actually we're super gonna, beneficial yeah, to us so, that they give you that. Yeah, so we kind of get the the, yeah. the guts of the information when we're gonna see these, when they predict they're gonna be there. Um, they talk about like so for Chevy it was awesome. They talked a lot about the Z06, and we were all so excited and how many they're gonna make, what deal, how which dealers are gonna get allocated to certain ones because not just yeah, every dealer is the same because yeah. because some dealers sell more Corvettes like down south obviously. Than up here, we're actually a pretty decent Corvette dealer, so we got a, a decent amount of Z06s. Yeah. We thought were, was pretty fair. So they go over that kind of stuff. They talk about the future. Um, they talk. They might sneak in something in there that they didn't br- they didn't bring to the auto show or something that's going to be released, which is cool. Um, they treat us well, but it's also fun to interact with other dealers. What they think about the product, how they think what product they're going to sell well with their consumer base, because you kind of have everyone's little different niche in New York. Mm-hmm. It's like it's different Long Island than upstate New York. Like we like our pickup trucks. I know pickup trucks are big everywhere, but upstate New York, it's pitch pickup truck heaven. Yeah, well, I mean that, so, that makes me think of like they have the world urban car of the year. That doesn't fit for us. Yeah, all those cars are designed for inner cities, right? So like if you think of them like for our our, our brands, right? I think the only one of our brands that even has an urban car left is the Mirage, right? Like those are considered urban. That's really cars. urban. That's really. That's urban. what that award is for, but that's not for us up here. Yeah. In the Hudson Valley, those cars you see a lot. Like, Shit, you got NYPD officers drive smart cars, but it's, yeah. a, it's an urban car. So that's why you're saying like every market is just different for every brand. So we don't really have any of those vehicles left anymore. Um, and it's, it's it's better for us. I mean, we have we have people up here trading in Mercedes to buy big old big old trucks now. So it's a it's a good trade off yeah. for us. We're in a little niche area in these counties up here that that. It, really works well for everyone's towing a, a horse trailer or, or working on a farm a lot of people up here so it's it's awesome to see and we enjoy selling trucks but we also have the people that commute to new york city every day the commute yeah. to north jersey so we have a car for everyone and pretty much any any price range uh, tying it back to why we go right because obviously it's a big opportunity you don't know who you're going to meet you just learn so much about your your type of business you're in so like advice that we can give other businesses is find a similar event for like what you're in if you're a coffee company find the coffee expo if you're a cookie company like find something because you just never know who you're gonna meet, like me yeah. and if you want to like so yeah i mean a elaborate lot, a on lot that. yeah a lot of it is obviously get the first-hand content what's new so for so my fiance's family's grocery store they have the grocery expo you like they see the new way to stock in shelves that better or better That's the consumers thing? like yeah they, they do okay. have a grocery one so like it's to benefit the consumer like what's new in there what technology can help the consumer so you're not just getting firsthand of the new stuff that's coming out and being able to touch and feel it and see it and also show it to your consumers firsthand like hey this is coming we have this what do you think about this vehicle and you're getting it before it comes out so that's a big part of it in in sharing it but it's also 
it's also to communicate with with say other people in your field you get to brainstorm with other people hear their opinion what they're doing say at their car dealership or what they're doing at their coffee shop whatever it is that's the that's the big part you're collabing with other people and hearing their opinion on how they operate then you get a chance to see these ceos that you get to watch them on social media and stuff but you might have a chance to engage with them get their opinion hear what they're saying about the product firsthand which is a huge advantage to your competitor that might not go to these events so there's so many opportunities not just for social media but it's it's really meeting with your peers at a high level collabing and also getting to see people that run these company these bigger companies say Hyundai or Chevy or whatever it is and and you're really hearing from them firsthand touching and feeling and a lot of times they'll come up to you and talk to you they they walk around so it's yeah. it's phenomenal to see and I highly recommend it for everyone at least go to one once a year and have people engaging with your company so you can like it's it's phenomenal so you know that, i like that, that's great advice but even the social support portion of it like to tie back to our last episode that released um your business needs social media yeah your business needs it so if you can go to this you can obviously learn from it to help your consumers and it's great for your social media for for content yeah. purposes because your business exactly your business needs it and, and also so it's not just for social media like you could use this for marketing too like you that get the new true. vehicle to come yeah. out and people are asking about it be like hey this is what we got to see at the auto show that is true. look it's ready so and so and get their contact information there's different ways to go about it to share this this content with with your consumer because people do get excited they want to know about it so all these ram buyers if you want to show them the new ram electric you could send them out hey look at this video we created if they don't follow you on social media mm. so there's so much more opportunity than than you think of just going there. Oh yeah, it's just another auto show. It's it's really, it's really not. You're there firsthand. You're engaging. You're collabing. You're talking to fellow fellow people in the same industry. It's it's like a win win, um, and I highly recommend it. Yeah, that, that's why we go. So <clears throat> yeah, is there anything else you want to talk about with the auto show since it's coming up? And we got we got thirteen it's, days. It's a it's a busy time. It's exciting time. Um, I know me and my brother love to go. It's it's uh it's a time you really get to really dig in and see new stuff hear what the the ceos have to say and then best is just shooting the shit with your with your fellow dealers at a good time and getting exciting about the product what you're going to bring back to your team and tell them like hey this is coming our consumers are absolutely going to love this and they're kind of giving you that price range too like yeah. we can really this is really going to be beneficial to our consumers so that's all that hype build up is is awesome to see and get it and and bring back the information to to your uh, team members yeah, so we'll we'll get content out to, to all of our listeners and consumers uh, those first two days. But um, outside of even watching our content, they should go to the public days. They should go check it out for themselves. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not too far away. And New York City's fun, too. Grab some food. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, and follow us at Healy Brothers on all social platforms.